Today we're going to learn some fun facts about pole dancing. Now, whether you use it for fitness, enjoyment, or employment, or just to show off, the physiological consequences on your body are the very same. It's great exercise, it's a lot of fun, so let's talk about it. I'm sure you'll all be able to appreciate how truly amazing our bodies are. The first topic we're going to talk about is stability. Stability is important because whether you're dancing or you're in a hold, you don't want to fall. You don't want to be sprawled out on the ground, not fun, not sexy. So the monosynaptic reflex arc enables you to be stable, and that's what we're going to talk about first. So the best way to talk about stability is to talk about what happens when you're not stable, when you're falling. So if I'm, if I'm standing here and I start to fall right now, bending at the knees, that is going to stretch my quadricep. And what happens then is there are sensory receptors inside the muscle that respond to a lengthening. And when they lengthen enough, it sends an action potential to the motor neurons. Now what that means is there's an electrical current traveling from the muscle to my spinal cord. Um, when it reaches the motor neuron in the spinal cord, that electrical signal becomes chemical. Those chemicals drift across the synapse and cause their own action potential to occur in the motor neuron. The motor neuron sends its electrical signal to the neuromuscular junction, which is located at the muscle. That's why it's called neuromuscular. It's going from a neuron to a muscle. So, when it arrives at the, the um, neuromuscular junction, it causes contraction via the sliding fil filament theory. Sorry, sliding filament theory. So, if I'm falling, the muscle gets stretched, the signal goes from the muscle to my spinal cord, back out to the muscle, contracting it, making it shorter, and then I'm upright, I'm standing tall, I'm stable. And this happens when you dance, happens when you stand, it happens when you sit, happens all the time. So be grateful for the reflex arc. What's so special about the neuromuscular junction? How does that cause contraction? Well, a molecule called acetylcholine gets released from the end terminal of the motor neuron and binds to the muscle cell at the neuromuscular junction at specific receptors. These receptors open a pathway for sodium to come into the cell and potassium to leave the cell. And when that happens, it causes a voltage change to propagate down the membrane of the cell into something called a T-tubule, which is a little indentation. Lining the inside of the T-tubule, there are interspersed dihydropyridine receptors, which uh, interact with rhyanidine receptors to allow calcium out of the sarcoplasm in particular and into the cytoplasm. This, now, normally, calcium is kept into the sarcoplasm in particular by active transport. That means it takes energy. But when the current gets to the dihydropyridine, that reacts with the rhyanidine, it allows the calcium to come out following, once again, its diffusion gradient. And that's the first step in muscle contraction. What is the role in this calcium in muscle contraction? Let's start by saying that there are two kinds of filaments in a muscle cell. Thin filament called actin, and thick filament called myosin. Now, when calcium binds to troponin, which sits on actin, it changes the conformation of another substance called tropomyosin, which reveals myosin binding sites on the actin. So, calcium binds. Now, there's going to be myosin binding sites on this filament right here. Myosin will release ADP and an inorganic phosphate and bind to those binding sites. And when that happens, it causes the filaments to physically pull past each other. Just like this, just like I'm moving my fingers, they pull past. You can see these, um, these filaments, these actin, are going to be pulled together by that myosin, which causes a contraction in the 
Thanks for sticking around with me guys. Now you understand when you're on the pole or you're in a hold or doing anything in life where you need to be stable, you know how it happens. So thanks for bearing with me and I hope you learned a little bit and have a new appreciation for physiology.